This is a story about a man who made a difference and never forgot where he came from. This is the story of Israel Harold Asper. For 40 years, this once small town boy navigated the waters of politics and international business, leading when leaders could not be found. Izzy, as he was known, insisted that all of us need to enter the trenches and become protagonists. His parents, both musicians, immigrated to Minnedosa, Manitoba from the Ukraine in 1926. Izzy grew up working in the local movie theater run by his father, cleaning gum off the seats by hand. This small town start was an early lesson that with hard work, dedication, and a dream, anything is possible. He delivered newspapers at the young age of 14, and in 10th grade, he started his own high school newspaper. This new venture gave an early glimpse into his professional future in law and the media. He kept busy after high school, studying music, philosophy, and history at the University of Manitoba, while also writing a music column and participating in debate, drama productions, and student politics. A popular and cheerful youth, Israel married Ruth Babs Bernstein, his high school sweetheart. Together they started a family, raising sons David and Leonard and daughter Gail. After graduating from law school as class valedictorian in 1957, he pursued his master's degree while at the same time forming his own law firm, Asper, Friedman & Company. Izzy built a successful career as a tax lawyer and consultant, but attracted more widespread attention with a weekly syndicated tax column in the Globe and Mail. His writing was well respected, exemplified by his best-selling book on taxation, which he wrote in only six weeks. Believing that public service was the highest of callings, Asper won the leadership of the Provincial Liberal Party in 1970 and spent the following five years advocating tax incentives for businesses, a Bill of Rights, and rural development, among other issues. Though he did not become Premier as he had hoped, Asper retained his legendary confidence. Upon resigning from politics, he said, I'm like the racehorse trained to run. I'm still looking for a forum. He later found his forum in broadcasting. It was in Winnipeg, where he rebuilt a struggling studio into one of the few independent television stations in Canada, CKND. Later, he acquired Global TV, which became the hub of CanWest Global Communications, Canada's largest media company. But he wasn't done yet. His next career would see him give back to his community, or as he put it, paying his debts. Asper gave millions through his foundations to local hospitals, parks, theaters, art centers, and cultural centers. He was the University of Manitoba's most generous individual supporter. In 1999, his donations allowed the university to establish the Asper Chair in International Business and Trade Law and the Asper Center for Entrepreneurship. After a $10 million gift in 2000, the university's business school was renamed in his honor. Izzy described it as the greatest recognition he had ever received. These major gifts have helped ensure that the I.H. Asper School of Business will continue to produce many of Canada's outstanding leaders of tomorrow. He was always the protagonist, fighting for his city, his country, and his heritage. His friends and colleagues watched with admiration as he worked tirelessly to achieve his dream of a Canadian Museum for Human Rights in Winnipeg to commemorate the victims of intolerance and to teach citizens the importance of standing up to protect human rights. He was known as the tough-as-nails, politically incorrect, jazz-loving media titan who always stood behind his hometown even when others in his place might have moved to larger centers. From a small town boy to Manitoba's favorite son, Israel Harold Asper lived a hundred lives, touched millions of people, and will never be forgotten because there has never been anyone like him.